You guys, are, you guys are still making the other one with them. Um... We haven't in a while, only because it's it's partially my fault. Kaylee's really, Kaylee's great on camera. I just ran into her the other night. Yeah. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. She's comfortable on camera. If I give her the lines and like ahead of time, she memorizes them perfectly. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be on camera doing that because I don't want to be like the constant person on camera for Eat Local. I see. And uh, and so it's great because I can pay Kaylee a little bit of money and she'll show up and do stuff. So it's, it works perfectly for me. Why don't you want to be the the face of your business? Because, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if I want to have a face of my business. I understand. Yeah, if I'm being honest. Like, in the beginning, it was, and it still is, like, a little bit, like, especially on Instagram stories, but... In the beginning, it was just me all the time on camera because I was the only person. But you know, now I have a little bit of money. I could pay somebody, you know, mm-hmm. a dollar to be on camera for me, <laughs> and, uh, and they'll do wow, it. Wow, you guys are so generous. I know. <laughs> yeah, they get an Eat Local card every time. <laughs> so Kaylee's got like a hundred Eat Local New York. Cards. I mean, if you <laughs> if you're going around, that's a lot of money. A lot of money saved. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyways. I just I just realized I don't have a rule on the car on the website that you can't stack eat local cards to get more five dollar discounts. I should probably put that caveat. Physically stack them. You can't yeah, physically, physically stack. Like them. if what if somebody showed up and said we have four cards for our. <laughs> f- uh, so. Um, hey, you live and you learn. Yeah, exactly. I just want it to be kind of a diverse crowd of people on our channel, and like bloggers and people doing videos and stuff. I just want to see like. A different array of people, and yeah, it's not eat local, Anthony. It's exactly. eat, <laughs> it's eat, eat local, eat New local New York. New York. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, so that's what I want to do. That's mm-hmm. why I like having Kaylee on. That's why I want to find different hosts for different shows and all that kind of shit. I think it's very smart. You're building a network. Yeah, which is goals. That I is, think the, it's, yeah. I think that's really, really awesome. Yeah. So, so Kaylee does good. I've been toying with the idea of she does well. She does well. <laughs> Kaylee does really well. Um, I've been toying with the idea of actually hiring her to do be in all of our pictures. Yeah. So instead of just taking a picture of food, it would be Kaylee's eating food. Instead do of, do you think she's self-centered enough to like that? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. um, uh, I like Kaylee, but Kaylee would one hundred percent do that. I think she's a good. I think she does a a, a good job. She's like a amateur model a little bit on the mm-hmm. side and stuff and. Nice. Um, like the people that work at American Eagle that are like the, yeah. the greeters. Yeah. I forgot about that. I forgot those people would stand out. Yeah. Dude, so I my first job was American Eagle. Really? And they hire you they, when they hire you on, they say, So you guys are basically modeling our clothes. You have to wear our clothes when you're working. Yeah. And some people took it to heart and would change their Facebook stat or not status like the where i work is modeling at american <laughs> eagle and i was like i don't want to be that guy <laughs> i would have been the person if i worked there that they would have been like you're in a stock shelves in the back <laughs> you can wear whatever you want <laughs> dude I, I i uh wish i was that person they had the best job really we would all have little intercoms in our ear yeah and they would be like hey i need a check size for uh this jean and the person in the back like, cool, got it. And then they would like fill, they would know, they search everywhere. And like they never had to deal with the people outside. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes it's fun, but it's a lot of like smiling. Yeah. You know? Your face yeah. hurts after work. Oh, for sure. That's not fun. No. That can't be fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's why we that's why God invented masks. You don't have to smile as much. Oh my anymore. God. Have you seen the, the videos of people that like will wear their mask and then they'll fake smile? No. They just, they just do this. Uh, <laughs> you can definitely tell like when, someone, yeah, when someone's doing it or not. I love the Sticking TikTok. Sticking the tongue out at you? <laughs> I love the TikTok videos of the guy who had the face mask made that looks exactly like his face. <laughs> and, yep. so, and then he puts these videos online troll. of people about to react to him. Yep. And then he shows it's just a mask. Yeah. It is my, it's my second face. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, yeah. Second Do you get stand. into uh, any like virtual reality stuff at all in your personal time? Oh, like um, metaverse or Decentraland or every anything? time I close my eyes, <laughs> I'm in another universe. No, like not not video game related. 
Uh, however, everybody always tells me, you got to get the new VR. You got to get this and that. I almost, I was at Target and they had like the Quest 2 yeah. or whatever it's called. And so I'm like, all right, let's, I've been interested in getting it. Yeah. And I go to check it out and they said, oh, sorry, we actually can't sell you this. There's, it's like something's wrong with it. So like we have mm. to take them all back. Oh, I'm wow. like, Stop teasing me. Stop putting it on the floor. Like, <laughs> they put it back in the shelf. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and I was like, why yeah. would you? <laughs> like, we want to advertise that we offer it, but yeah. not this one. I asked Santa for one for Christmas. If I don't get it, I'm going to just go buy it myself. Wait, should we tell him? <laughs> what? Santa, I'm not getting it? No, Santa's not. Never mind. Santa's Santa's not what? Santa's not straight. Santa's not straight. <laughs> I just watched the movie with Kurt Russell and uh, what's her face. I know that Santa's straight. Um, <laughs> I saw mommy kissing Santa. Yeah, yeah. I always thought that was about <laughs> an affair <laughs> when I was growing up as a kid. I'm Isn't like, it? <laughs> I mean, obviously that song isn't about <laughs> like a, 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 well, to an you, affair. It's but, still an about an affair. Yeah. Yep. It's still, an, yeah, it's actually an about an affair. But I mean, he's, I don't remember the rest of the lyrics except for I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Underneath the missile. Yeah. Last night. I don't remember the rest of the lyrics, but mm-hmm, yeah, it's a thousand percent mm-hmm, unless it's a single mm-hmm. mom. <laughs> they I'm sh- a single lady. <laughs> Put your hands up. Um, no, but I want to get one. I just, I just went into Decentraland last night and joined that world. And um, Decentraland, yeah, Decentraland. It's like Second Life. Okay, uh, yeah. um, so you like create your avatar. You go in there. You can walk around. You can do shit. I immediately found the casino and started playing blackjack with Ethereum. Very for cool. Real money. <laughs> Wait a minute, dude. What is this? Yeah, and I lost. Is Very this on cool. your phone or is this? Uh, no, my computer, my computer. laptop. Yeah. Okay, and you go in, and you can actually use cryptos to. So you have to when you create when you go into Decentraland and create your shit, you have to start with some amount of crypto, and I think like the minimum is like a hundred dollars. Yeah, or at least that's what I did. Yeah, and I didn't have a wallet, so then I had to go find, build a wall, MetaMask wallet, uh-huh. and buy the Ethereum and put it in there, and then bring it over to Decentraland, and then I'm walking around and. I immediately saw a sign for casino. I was like, oh, I wonder if that's real. And so I went there and (laughs) yeah, sure as shit. It's fucking real. So two things. One, uh, I I mean, I like the crypto world. Yeah. Um, But it's you're one, you're already gambling with it. And second, (laughs) you're going in, you're like, I can gamble harder (laughs) i can really ruin my life um i can't believe you're like you 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 saw that and you're like yeah i'm just gonna keep gambling it even more uh but uh, secondly i recently just lost a wallet i had oh really which was kind of a bummer because uh i had bought doge 50 years ago wow 50 years ago, literally. <laughs> no, um, uh, but I was on Bittrex for a long time. Okay. Before you couldn't buy and sell and trade in America. In Am- you were allowed to buy and sell and trade in America. Yeah. And then they changed the rules years ago. And so some of my friends actually moved down to like Puerto Rico. Wow. Okay. And they're still in like that hmm. like uh, career path. Yeah. Um, and back then I had bought, I think it was, it probably equated to like, I had put money into Bittrex and all the rest of my funds was like n- maybe $90 left. I didn't know how to spend it. I'm like, I'll buy Dogecoin. <laughs> I'm like, I'll, who, who knows? And then this year, it <laughs> went, it didn't go right to the moon, but it went somewhere in space. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, I'm up 100,000% or whatever <laughs> it was. And so that wallet was on my old phone and my girlfriend, bless her, she, Bought me a new phone for Christmas because she was tired of me asking for her phone to take pictures <laughs> of food and things like that yeah. and myself. And, and she's like, she got me a new phone so that I had to stop asking her for hers. That's amazing. And so I was like, all right, great, new phone, let's do it. So we back everything up to the cloud, but it doesn't save your passwords and, and oh, all your information. Yeah. So for anybody out there getting a new phone for Christmas, wow. make sure you're checking all your passwords That's and writing down your whatever. So, dude, oh. the wallet that I had, 
It's trust wallet. You'd think I'd write down, and I did. I yeah. know I did because it tells you to do it, and it tells you, like, okay, are you sure that you, you backed this up? Yeah. Like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> it's like a 12-word passphrase. Yeah. You have to know. And, like, I, I don't, I didn't have it. Oh, so I lost all, all that. But you know what? It oh. was a sign. It's like, I, I mean, I think that we're kind of all here to, like, go through trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. And if you can, like, learn to, like, let go, that same day, I was like, well, if I can't find the password, like, I just have to let go of it. I mean, really, I only spent $90. Right. Yeah. I get that. How much was it worth at the time? Thousands. Yeah. <laughs> I once, uh, I still have not let go of this story. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the opposite of, of what you just said. Okay, good. Cheer me up. <laughs> Cheer me up about a story about your life. When I was like 22, something uh-huh. like that. When online poker was like legal in America in New York, you can't do it anymore. No, nah, well, I don't know if you still can or not, but you know there was a time period period of time in New York where you couldn't. Okay. For money, online okay. poker. So, not for nuts, but money and yeah. I had put, I had like uploaded or you know d- deposited a couple hundred dollars in there into like full tilt. <clears throat> yeah. I was supposed to go to a friend's house to play poker at their house in a cash game. While I was waiting to go over there, I put this couple hundred dollars into full tilt and played, and like I was up to a thousand bucks. And then I left and went to my buddy's house, and we played in this cash game until like 11 p.m. from like seven to 11. Uh-huh. I won a couple hundred dollars there. That game ended, so me and two of my friends went down to. Tur- we're like, well, we're not going to stop playing, so we went down to Turning Stone and played until like three in the morning. I want a couple hundred dollars there. Ooh. I come back home. I'm wired. I just can't sleep. I played from like 3.45 until like noon the next day on full tilt. And no joke had gotten up to, it was like $15,000. What the heck? So I've got the $15,000 in the account. I mean, it's just been like this unreal thing. Um, this is all in 24 hours. Yeah. So with full tilt, when you wanted to cash out your deposit, they would mail you a check. Uh-huh. And the first time that you ever did it, because I'd never deposited money before, you had to fax them in, like, pictures of your driver's license, of, like, your car. and I mean, it was just ridiculous, all the steps you had to do to verify your They're identity. hoping you don't have those things. Right, exactly. <clears throat> so... And your mother's a picture of your mother's maiden name. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> a picture of it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a lot so a lot of the other poker platforms at that time, once you selected you wanted to to deposit your funds or mm-hmm. re- withdraw your funds, yeah. while they were waiting to verify it, you couldn't touch that money. Yeah, sure. With full tilt, they let you keep playing with that money until they mailed you the check. Okay. So it had took me like taken me like a day or two. You know, now granted, this is all my fault. I'm not saying this; it's not the fault of full tilt. You can sure. blame yeah. me or Chris. We're both here. Um, it was Kristen's fault. Um, mm-hmm. So, in the meantime, while like during the day, I'm trying to fax in my driver's license and car insurance and social security card from work yeah. to full tilt. Okay, I'm still playing with that fifteen thousand uh-huh. dollars, and over the course of two days, I had lost all the fifteen thousand dollars away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> now i i reflect on that story and think to myself i once lost fifteen thousand dollars playing online poker that's crazy not thinking i only lost a couple hundred dollars right you being the better more developed human being than i am sure say, yep. i only lost 90 bucks yeah yeah <laughs> uh <laughs> wow dude you know what but that, that's my that's the story of like how life goes it's like it wasn't your money to begin with in, in some sense, it's like if you can learn to let go of it, it was never yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that just means that there's more room in your life for more fortune. Yeah. That's what I believe. Yeah. Really, it's like it's like you were maybe I was focusing too much on on it because like the only reason I found out I didn't have my trust wallet is more anymore because I wanted to check my account. I yeah. To check my balance. Uh, How's it doing today? Right. Hmm. And it was just one of those subconscious things like just to check. Hmm. Uh but like that's the story of like every I've only gone to the casino to gamble two or three times, hmm. and uh, the first time my friend 
uh, his mother uh, had gone to the casino. She loves to go there to eat, to party, to whatever. So she had acqui- uh, has earned like an overnight stay at oh, the hotel, yeah. right? You spend enough money, they'll reward you. Yeah. Uh, you lose enough money, they'll yeah. reward you. <laughs> um, and so she brought us out there. She gave us each a hundred bucks. Hmm. Okay. She goes, this is yours to keep. Spend it how you want to do it. We immediately go to the penny slots because I, I mean, I don't know what's right. fair and what's not fair. Yeah. And uh, I went up, I went down, I went up, I went down, but I broke even at the end of the night. I go, oh, here you go. She goes, no, it's yours. You get to keep it. <laughs> I go, all right, awesome. I'll buy you guys gas, whatever. Yeah. But uh, and then the second time we went, did the same thing. I went down, I went up, I went down, and I went even. Hmm. And I'm like, I guess this is my sign to like. <laughs> you just. I don't know. Not go to the casino anymore. Not going to go to the casino anymore, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I haven't gone to the casino in a long time, and I would mm. like to go again. Yeah. They have, one, a lot of good food places to choose from. Yeah. What's the, uh, was it like the Purple Lotus? What's that? Oh, yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it's not the purple. I forget the name of it, but yeah. somebody was just talking to me about that. They said it's the, one of the. It's like the best food it's out really there. It's really great. And at the end of, of service, you can say, you can ask, uh, may I have some rice to take home? And they'll load you up with rice to take home with you. Really? It's really cool. Wow. It's really cool. It's some of the best. probably had orange chicken when I went. It was some of the best orange chicken I've ever had. Hmm. Um, and then also, I was honored enough to be able to play the gig there at one point in time. We, wow. We, I think we one was a 95X festival. Oh, cool. And then the next one, we were asked to come back to play hmm. for Hank and the Cupcakes. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and I didn't know who they were, but they were like, Oh no, that's a that's a big deal. And they're like, uh, they're like, they were on Comedy Central or something. And I was like, but they were really cool. They're a two piece, and they're huh. from, I think Jerusalem, really, or Israel. Hank and the Cupcakes. Hank and the Cupcakes. Wow, I I believe I'm saying it correct. And uh, it's a two piece. It's a it's a husband and wife, hmm. and they left their children to go pursue their music careers. <laughs> I don't know if they have kids, but I, I, I just remember I just remember being like, damn dude, that bass rig is huge. I'm like, don't you want to like just chill? They literally brought like f- ten full stacks for themselves. It's just two people. But I mean, it's crazy. She's a drum she's she, so she drummed and she would be they both I think they both like sing back and forth. Yeah. And she's up there standing up, playing, you know, k- kicking, smashing, hitting, singing, and then uh it is them, right? Hank and the Cupcakes, you found them, right? It's, it's, it's a husband and wife, and they are just so full in love with each other. It's, it's that's the cutest amazing. thing ever. And um, that's hilarious. They're awesome, but uh, yeah, they. Um, I thought you were completely making that up. That's, awesome. <laughs> that's why Chris had to look it up for you. Yeah, she's like, she's like, nah, he ain't lying. Yeah, I need to pull. Maybe a, she didn't believe me either. I need to pull a Joe Rogan and like connect the TV so you can do that. Shit. Fact check. Yeah, fact check. Pull it up, Jamie. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I used to be on a big. Joe Rogan podcast binge when I like four or five years ago. I every mm. day it was like a whatever subject I liked, he had a podcast for. Oh yeah, and I would just listen to the entire thing throughout my. Sh- I was a bartender, and I would and I would listen to it. My shift it was slow. I'd listen to it inside. And hmm. I started really. My brother Robert would always send me Joe Rogan podcast to listen to a couple years ago, and I'd be like, "You're out of your fucking mind. This is three hours long." There's no way in hell I'm listening to this. Yeah. And then during the pandemic, when like the especially the beginning when everybody was stuck at home and I was doing a bunch of yard work, I would drink beer all day, like drink Bud Light or Molson's. Proud of you, Bud. Like, Stayed busy all fucking day long. No one's gonna drink those beers if, if, if they're sitting around. Right. But you did it. And I would listen to Rogan, and I got hooked on fucking because I'd be out in the yard for like three hours and I'd sure. finish an episode. Okay, but did you? Were you already in a podcast format before for yourself? Yeah. You were. Uh, and you had discovered Joe Rogan along the way. Yeah. Did it change the way you format? Oh, that's your... a really good question. Uh, no. I started, um, I'd say, I'd say, yeah, maybe in a sense it has like, you know, you and I are talking right now. Like, so I don't. Before they I drink th- beer, we drink beer. I know, yeah. <laughs> we um, be, we ha- they have red curtains. We have red <laughs> curtains. Um, that's actually why I bought red curtains. Uh, I 
a couple like we've been doing this now. I start did the first episode maybe five years ago. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Four, three years ago, we really started doing them consistently. And I had Jimmer Sikowski, who owns the Chick Fil A in town, on a podcast as a guest. The Chick Fil A on in, uh, in East North in Syracuse. A, uh, yeah, Route Eleven. Up there. I had met him one time. Oh, really? And I was like, this guy must own the place because he's running around a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a cool. I just thought it would be. I had him on because I was like. I can't think of a more successful or well, more well-run restaurant in town. Sure. So I was like, maybe he'll have some information for other owners who listen to the podcast. Yeah. What ensued was I used to do research for all the guests and write down questions before the episode. Yeah. With his episode, the only things I could find out about him online were a Syracuse.com article from like a year prior. Yeah. Sorry, you had said you had said that thing about is the best well-run restaurant my soul just died <laughs> you're gonna pick it up on camera and just go my eyes just go back in my head we're gonna get to that in a second <laughs> um so the entire interview with him was me do you remember the old chris farley episode on snl where he's interviewing paul uh mccartney and he's saying remember that time that you were on the you were in the <laughs> beatles <laughs> and Paul McCartney says, yeah. And Chris Warrior says, that was awesome. <laughs> That's how my interview with him went. I was like, so the Syracuse.com article said that you did this. Is that true? Can you tell me about that? <laughs> it was terrible. It was so fucking... I was sweating the whole time because I was so nervous of like... In my head, I'm thinking, this is going so poorly. Why am I subjecting this poor man to this interview right now? It was just sure. bad. So the very next episode... And that was, sorry, that was when you had your... Questions written out? Yeah. I see. The very next episode I recorded was with Chris Malone. And I kind of knew Chris going into the interview, into the podcast. I had a busy week, so I just never prepared for it. And he and I sat down and just had a conversation, and it went great. Felt really good. There you go. So that's what I do from now on. I don't fucking research anybody. Sure. I think... Yeah. Like... Matt Reed, who just left, I would, it was thinking throughout the week as I'd be driving around things that I'm curious about him and some stuff I'd think like, all right, maybe he has some information I'd love to talk to him about that I know this restaurant owner listens to our podcast. Yeah. I want them to know know what he knows, so I'm going to ask him about it. We never even got to it because we are talking about other shit. There you go. With you, I know going into it, and I've said this to you before, and I've said this to countless other fucking people, I cannot think First of, off, thank you. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot be think of a more well-branded, better-branded restaurant that exists or that has existed in the last six years okay, in Okay, now Syracuse, my soul's leaving York, body. Than Three Lives. That's awesome. Thank you. It doesn't... It, the, nowhere. Yeah. And next year it gets better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because we get to st- help standardize what we want to do there. Yeah. We have some standardized menu items, but it's like, how, how can we make it um, more based on preferences? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so mm. the menu is more catered to, it's not all jumbled on one page. Here's everything we offer. And just you, yeah. your eyes go everywhere. And that's cool. You know, and, and maybe your focus, mm. maybe your focal point goes to the top left or the middle, right? Or yeah. where there's a symbol next to something. Because that's what we found out actually um, just by like the, the servers and the bartenders. You know, we know what's the most popular item. And sometimes it's based on is there a potion bottle next to this? Menu item, like hmm. the Estes flask, has the uh, the Estes flask symbol next to it. So your eyes go right to that and go, oh, that must be a special yeah, something. Yeah. You know? And huh. it's like, well, everything else is special, too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but so we're going to try and reform it. I have some, we have some really, really cool, especially for the drink menu. I don't want to say stuff about the food menu, but the food menu is going to be amazing, too. Hmm. But I'm really, it's always been about the bar and, and the food um, was more of like, we want you to stay, but we want it to be quality. We want it to be like, does, hey, does Gordon Ramsay listen to this podcast yet? He might. Okay. He might. So if <laughs> if Gordon Ramsay was to ever walk into Three Lives, we, we could say, yeah, everything's made fresh. Mm-hmm. Frozen would be t- fries and tots, yeah. you know, which is pretty 
standard, I think, you right. know, we don't have a big, we don't have a, if we had a bigger place, we could do more fresh th- things. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think he would be really impressed with, um, you, cause on his shows, have you seen him like pull out dressers and sorry, like freezers full of his frozen stuff that's been frozen for months and months and months. Yeah. And he shows it to the employees and he's just like, why do you guys, you guys make, you guys prep every day for what? To put it in the freezer? <laughs> if you're prepping every day, it should just go out fresh. Right. And uh, that's what we, we watch enough of uh, American, no, kitchen nightmares, not yeah. American right. nightmares. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> to be like, yeah, you can learn like shortcuts from watching those shows. Yeah. My wife is obsessed with that stuff. And, you know, she works for the Department of Health. In the nursing home sector, uh-huh. and she's uh, if she is obsessed with kitchen nightmares and any, any of that kind of stuff, she is desperate to try and find a way to do that locally and make a living, you know, doing it. And uh, by like going into a restaurant and having them pay her to come and find the shit, you know, sure, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's the consul- it's the consultant, yeah, and and what they're getting from him. And I really like that he brings like so much business to that establishment they must it's almost like they plan for a week the whole town's gordon's gonna be here for the whole town is gonna be at this new place where it's gonna be great and then like he gets to see them like either cave under pressure because they've never had a busy restaurant yeah or what right so yeah but yeah. consulting would be great for her she should totally do that yeah um I don't think there's enough business in town for it. I think there's too many restaurants that just, no, we're okay. Well, the, the, it's either too much pride, yeah, <clears throat> which I've seen businesses have, yeah, too much pride, and then they don't listen to like maybe they take some customer criticism or feedback, but it's like too much pride. And I have so much pride, yeah, I have some pride that I will ask my staff. I'm like, what's everybody's opinion on this cocktail that I made? If it's something that I make or it's a food thing and they'll be like, it sucks. And I'm like, it hurts. Right. It's like overall. Yeah. It's what people are going to like. So it's like, I'm not always going to have my favorite thing on the menu. Mm -hmm. It's not generalized enough. Maybe there is somebody not to get biblical. I forget where (gasps) in the Bible. John 316. There's some story of the this messenger brings us they brings word of something bad that's happened to someone and the moral of that story is um uh basically you don't want to be the person that brings the bad news to the person in charge yeah <clears throat> and someone recently brought me bad news of something that was happening that we were doing and that immediately popped in my head and it was like oh you're right i was like it's like, cause I hate that person right now. I hope they fucking die. No, but cool. But I was oh, thinking, oh, we can my, swear. But oh, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> we were supposed to do magic mushrooms a couple weeks ago, but <gasps> somebody didn't bring the fucking mushrooms. Really? Not that you were supposed to, but the the, the, <laughs> guest, the guest was supposed to do bring the mushrooms. They sell that at X Y Z restaurant <laughs> <laughs> supplier. <laughs> at Garros. <laughs> um, Wildflowers. <laughs> the, <laughs> Yeah, the guest. We were, we did like uh, three different restaurant owners, and one of them was supposed to bring mushrooms, and he never wow. didn't get them. Uh, what's your experience with? I've never I've never taken them before. You should mushrooms. totally do a full podcast <laughs> on a whole eighth. I um, you will be licking the microphone <laughs> and talking crazy. I don't know where your ideas come from for the why well, I, I, magic I, mushrooms. So, but I I feel that. I used to be more creative than I am today. And I think part of that is just being a business owner and having to balance a checkbook and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. And so I've just had this feeling that something like mushrooms would help unlock some new thing, some new creative thing for the business that I can do. Yeah, Um, yeah. it could. If your mindset going into it is that, I think that you may reap some benefit. However, you are fully capable on the opposite side of that spectrum. I just had a conversation last night with my friend who's been sober for almost nine years. Wow. And his fear um, 
becoming sober was he was not going to be funny, charismatic, and not be the not be that person yeah. that he felt that alcohol gave him. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually what he realized is, well, I can save that money and spend it on things like vacations um, or my career and things that are going to actually propel me mm. into um, those, those goals and objectives. Yeah. Um, so I think you're, I think you should obviously do what your, what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I believe that what you need is a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, yeah, I have, I've got, yeah. Uh, yes, that's probably right. <laughs> Uh, so, honey, if you're listening, stop to this, filming we podcasts. Do have John's approval to go back to Hawaii. He just, oh my god, he just said that we could do it. Um, yeah, tightrope across a volcano. Yeah, I I, I'm approving it. Yeah. So now you can now you get to do it. You know, it is funny you say that though because uh, I just went to Chicago for a day, and on that trip, I did have. An I idea was so for a envious episode. of that. That's the coolest thing ever. Well, we should go some. So we're starting a new series that it's. Let's me, go to a barcade. It's me. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. It's it's me and restaurant owners or chefs going back to their hometown to have to show us around where they grew up eating and working. Okay. We'll fly to Camillus, New York. <laughs> <laughs> we can go to Rochester though. So there are big like pinball uh Swilburgers there? Yeah. I like Swilburger a lot. Yeah, we can do that. They also have Masudo oh no, so that's Buffalo. Masudo Chow's. We go to Buffalo. Yeah, I'm supposed to go recently, but um so we're going to Philly. We went to Chicago. We're going to Philly with Kyle from from Danny's and Kasai. Yep. Love we're going him. to Philly again with Alex from Amano. Yeah. And then we're going to New Haven, Connecticut with Nick from Toss and Fire. Pizza. Do me a favor. Have him bring one of his Philly steaks <laughs> down to Philadelphia and have a Philadelphia and try it. That would, that would be, be so that would be good. That would be so good. That They'd be, be like, good. hey, where'd you get this? Yeah. There's nothing more annoying than someone saying here, someone saying anywhere, that food is more authentic or less authentic than it is somewhere else that they visited once. Yeah. yeah. Dude, uh, I love where Syracuse eats. Uh, he's blowing up on it right yeah. now, which is awesome. I think that they should. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was really funny. Someone was like, can we, st- can we stop supporting? <laughs> I was like, what the, what the fuck are you talking about? Stop. Yeah. They're like, S- obviously people are getting paid to advertise. And I was like, are you nuts? What extra cash right. <laughs> yeah, does exactly. he have yeah. to do that? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was nuts. Yeah, where Syracuse eats can be a blessing and a curse at the same time. I mean, there was a big negative post that was out today about something that we did. And... I was and you with, within like two hours <laughs> no. it had two hundred comments. I didn't see this yet. Is it on Syracuse Eats? Yeah. It was about the breakfast club thing that Bud started and or we started where we went to the market diner on Saturday. Which I'm also very happy you guys are doing that. I think it's cool. I commend I commended you guys. Um uh, yes, you did. Thank you. You're welcome. Um you know, we had fourteen hundred dollars and to tip these waitresses and uh, the amount, uh, I mean, there's a lot of positive comments like this is so great. Thank you. We've had like 60 people sign up to join us at future ones because we're going to start doing them every month. Cool. Three lives has a brunch. Yeah. <laughs> we are. So, cause we have had, re- so we're telling all restaurants cause a bunch of reached, <clears throat> have reached out. Mm-hmm. We're going to put their name in a hat yeah. each month. We're just going to randomly pick one. Yeah, I think that's very fair. Because we have too, he and I have too many clients to say, well, we want to benefit the, you know. Yeah. yeah. You, how, you can't play God. Right. <laughs> it's not like, oh, but I know that there's this person. They could really use uh-huh. you know. Yeah. So we're well, gonna, that's, I think that's very fair. We're just going to do it randomly. Just make my piece of paper really large. <laughs> um, but there, so somebody posted on Where Syracuse Eats mm-hmm. and said, that's great that they did this, but don't forget about the back of house staff. And 200 fucking comments later, there's people just arguing back and forth, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it was just stupid. Sure. So, um, did but, you guys forget that they cooked your food or something? 
You guys, for, you guys thought that maybe the food just appeared, <laughs> right? We specifically said, I know there's people back there, but fuck them. We want to give this money to you, right? Um, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was, uh, it was, it was a little, little odd. Not odd, but unfortunate. So, of course, um, I personally, I've had, I've said this a couple times to guests. I personally wish social media would go away. I wish it didn't exist anymore. Certainly, um, it's so detrimental to society. I mean, I, I know it's detrimental to my own life. My average screen time is eight hours a fucking day um, on my phone. That's it? Yeah. And I know it's detrimental to my life. I make a personal Facebook... Like, something just happened today positively in my life, and the first thing that popped in my head was, when should I post this on my personal Facebook page to ensure more people will like it? Wow. So, and that's just the effect of being on social media all the time. And that's at a small scale. I can't imagine the people who have developed serious issues from being on social media all the time. Well, you hear it all the time. People can get cyber bullied into oh, yeah. ultimately losing a life. Yeah. Which is like, that's the worst thing ever. That's like the, that's the side of the internet you don't want to see, mm-hmm. you know? But, you know, there are benefits to it if you can control yourself. Yes. Um, there are. And I, I understand. I just, you know, I don't know. I, just, I think it also makes people lazy. Yeah. Like if, uh, you know, it could be make you lazy with business, too. It's like, oh, what you guys, how do you guys market? It's like uh, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. That's it. But you're an exception because you, um, there are a lot of lazy owners who are like, yeah, social, you know, just like what you just said. However, you're really proactive with it. You know, I mean, you do sure. it yourself, right? I do it myself. Yeah, but you hire Jess Montgomery, one of the most talented food, fo- one of the absolutely most talented love, photographers. I absolutely love Jess. Yeah. I absolutely love Stay Fresh. Yeah, I think what they do for artists in general is amazing too. Yeah, they have an art exhibit. I've gone to two exhibits now because mm. I think they've had they've had probably a few more, but um, I've been able to go more recently and like help yeah. support that. And there's some amazing artists in town, which I never would have known. Yeah. You know? That's cool. Uh, and then you re- you recognize, like, oh, that looks like something from OG. Or that looks like mm. something from the mural on on that building. And you're like, oh, that's yeah, really cool. But, um, no, but I mean, like, because sometimes I'll fall into the pit hole of, well, I posted for the day. Mm-hmm. But it still isn't getting new followers yeah you want new people Mm -hmm. all of the time and uh without your guerrilla marketing without going out and engaging and interacting and and networking uh, you know um it doesn't you don't have to go to a party to do that you could be buying a coffee and make small talk with a stranger yeah because that shit's cool yeah buy somebody a coffee yeah, actually, who Matt was just saying that right before you walked in. He was saying he went to recess uh-huh. on Montgomery, and the barista had a Three Lives hoodie on, and he was like, "Oh, do you?" He's like, "Oh, th-. he's like, do you work there?" She's like, "No, I just love going there." Oh, for real? Yeah, she's like, "I love hanging out there." I'm gonna yeah. have to go to recess and, and see, yeah, who that is, because yeah, I absolutely love that. Right, and it's it's actually kind of. Um, it's funny when people wear their merch inside mm-hmm. Three Lives because uh, drunk people will approach them and go, hey, can I get a water? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, what? And then they're like, awesome. you're fucking rude. And it's like, I don't we work here. That's hilarious. And they're like, I'm going to leave a four star. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. Yeah. So somebody was just telling me Michael and Steven who Panofsky? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> they just Dude. we did our gig at the Palace last week. And they did what at your gig? We rented the Palace Theater out. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to do them quarterly, I think. We rented the Palace Theater out and we invited six really aw- 11 really awesome guests down. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we had the Fiakis from Amano, Eric Devendorf uh, former SU player, yep. um, John Stage, um, Karen and Rydell and um, 
uh, Rachel Cortelling from Possibilities, uh-huh. Dan and Teresa Seely, and Adam Weitzman. Yep. We're all guests. Six different episodes. We recorded them at the Palace in an empty theater. Yeah. And I had hired this film crew. So the Michael Panofskis. and Steven did the did op, camera operation and stuff for him. We had a camera switch. We had an audio guy. Kristen and Nicole were PAs and just fucking... We were there from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. Just fucking crushed it. There's nobody more mentally driven that I know than the Panofskis. Yeah. They are next level. If you want to level up your life, mm-hmm. just talk, just buy them a beer or if, if they're drinking at that time. <laughs> yeah. But just talk to them <laughs> for like 10 minutes. They will, one, lift your spirits and be mm-hmm. like, you dumb, dumb. Like, you got this. <laughs> Don't be so dumb, dumb, dumb. Right? So I forget how your name came. Oh, I was Literally how they talk. I was talking about Three Lives and how much I loved it. Okay. And they said... You're, you're, you're getting points here for saying that. They said, we know John. And I think they said it was maybe at some place that years ago you had pulled out this book that was the inception of Three Lives. For sure. It was a halo land. <laughs> it was a land party I had. And there's still a picture on, on Instagram of like 16 guys at my, in my apartment. Hmm. Um, and I wanted to put together a LAN. It's probably 2019. And my neighbors didn't kill me because it was 16 guys <laughs> being like, boom, headshot. You suck. You know what I mean? And just like saying really hateful words to each other out of brotherly love and camaraderie. Yeah. And uh, my neighbors didn't give me any flack for it. But my, my small apartment in Liverpool filled that place up. Hmm. And uh, at the end of the night, I th- you know, because... I always have deep conversations when I'm with the Panofsky brothers and they are some of the most realest people ever. And, um, one thing that we've always done with each other and we haven't done it in a while, but we would go out with like, uh, f- f- six people mm-hmm. and we'd have brunch and it would be all like entrepreneurs. Oh, cool. Okay. And we would just, you could talk about anything, mm-hmm. uh, personal life, love life, uh, business, what you're doing next. Um, if you have any questions on w- how to overcome an obstacle, hmm. you have five other brains to bounce ideas off. That's cool. Like this is not working out. What am I not fucking seeing? Yeah. And they'll be like, Hey, dumb, dumb. <laughs> it's this. But so that night we, we got into it and I was, I pulled out like, like my, my, my notebook or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I really want to do this. I'm like, but I don't know how I'm going to get past the financial obstacle Mm. of opening it. And they're like, don't worry about it. Hmm. Just do everything else in the meantime. Don't worry about it. And then a year Hmm. later, it was there. You were there. And now I get to have a Halo land at Three Lives. Oh, nice. And uh, and they're like, they're like, can you imagine what the conversation is going to be like after the land? (laughs) We're going to have the next Halo party at. (laughs) <laughs> whatever is the next thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, I had never met them before. I had reached out. I needed a. Fi- I needed someone to do stuff. And I needed, you know, it was such a big project. And uh, so I reached out to Paul Daly. And I was like, do you know of anybody that you can recommend? And he was like, these two for sure. So, yeah, it was phenomenal. It was really, it was a fun, fun, fun day for how long of a day it was. The whole crew did great. Everybody got along. A bunch of us went to um, change of pace afterwards and mm-hmm. got beers and and some wings. And you know, it was. I it heard was, they have good wings. They have the best wings in Syracuse. Yeah. It was me, oh. Kristen, Bud, Laura, yeah, Michael and Stephen, and then our camera operator Ryan, and uh, or camera switcher Ryan. And I mean, Michael and I mean, it just like. You couldn't ask for like kind of like a weirder mix than of course. Me, Kristen, Michael, and Steven, and Bud, Laura. You know, and yeah. dude, Bud's really cool. Bud is the I I don't think he outside of family. I don't like anybody more than I like Bud, Laura. He would be like the weird uncle that comes to Christmas. Yes, the hilarious. I say that because he uncle. feels like family. Yeah. Okay. Now I ran into him at Danny Steaks. Oh, nice. This is not a paid advertisement. Yeah. 
and and uh, he was. I just I ordered my food. And I turned around. And he's sitting down there. He's like, I'm just waiting for my food. Yeah. And uh, and it was so serendipitous. But I was like, Hey, man, I um, we started talking about something, and he's like, I needed help with something, and he's like, Oh, I got you. I'll just put you on. Uh, well, but I'll, I'll give you John Catco's phone number. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> John Cracko? Yeah. yeah. The B- John Catco? Bud knows everyone. He know if he doesn't know, like he doesn't know how to do it. He knows who to find that does. Sure. I mean, he, I needed movers to help move furniture from here to the palace that day. Mm-hmm. I text like three other people. They're all laughing at me because I needed somebody here at 7 a.m. Yeah. They're all laughing at me. Bud's like, yeah. Uh, two seconds later, group text with me and the person. It all worked out. That's really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. He 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 has nothing to hide. He's like, I brought all my toys to the um, to the sandbox. Yeah, and I'm fine watching you guys enjoy the toys that I have. Yeah, yeah. He's Bud's not great. hiding anything behind his back. Yeah. There's a funny joke that I can't tell on air of Bud's. I'll tell you afterwards. Just remind me. <laughs> um, is that for your Patreon subscribers? They can get the bonus content <laughs> afterwards? No, this could not be repeated to anyone in <laughs> okay. public. This is going to change <laughs> my mind recorded, about Bud. Not on a recorded uh, thing. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So so you had the idea for Three Lives years ago then? Yeah. Yeah. I was... Um, well, this is a, a podcast, so I can go long form. Do whatever you want. I don't have to do short form. Kristen, would you mind just going to grab me a beer? You need another one? No, I'm I'm pretty good. By the way, guys, I didn't know I was going to like this so much, but this Bear is the stash, stash hero. Stash hero, and also whoever did the artwork, it says it right here. R. Hooser. Yeah, he's really talented. Yeah, I mean the colors on this, the taste of it. Yeah. The. It's, I mean, it's a zebra, unicorn, dragon, and they did a great job with um, the rainbows coming out of there. With the rainbows coming out of it, but it's also metallic, um, done really well, but yeah. also it tastes amazing. Uh, so yeah, so the Inception. I was working at Mirbo, and by the way, I cannot wait to go back. Just in case, thanks. I cannot wait to go back. I go every once in a while. To go get like a massage or to get some food or if I'm in skinny, if, if I'm any time in skinny Atlas, I will go to Mirbo. Hmm. If I'm close enough, we went pumpkin patch picking recently and we just went afterwards uh, over at that pumpkin patch down there. And um, it's still so relaxing and it, you still feel so taken care of. And uh, working there was amazing. Hmm. Um, what did you do there? So I started. 2010 or 11, I think. 12. I don't remember, but uh, I was there for about eight years in Skinny Atlas. I did pantry work, which was like salads, desserts. I started doing dinner service there. And then the best part about that place is like if you get too claustrophobic in your career path, they have... Multiple departments. You can do whatever you want. And if you need to take a break, you hmm. can explore hmm. the nice gardens <laughs> and walk around and clear your head. You know, or you can get there early and feed the koi fish. Like, it's such a blessing hmm. to have this as a place to work. That's cool. So I started in the kitchen, pantry side, doing dinner service. And then I learned uh, breakfast. I learned lunch. Every day I was on the... Um, I had to make a poisson du jour every single day. Hmm. And what taught me how to do that was one, my, my chef. Okay. But also, uh, it was on me to find some fish, scallops, Hmm. redfish, swordfish, whatever we had in there to use up for the special of the day. Hmm. And as long as he liked what I made and has any critiques, he was more, more than welcome to do it. But, uh, the flavor Bible, that book, Mm, yeah, dude, that book is amazing. Just mentioned that, right? Matt just mentioned that. Really? Yeah. There you go, man. I, I bought it again recently. I was on Amazon. I'm like, I got to get this book in because there's a lot of people that need to see what this is about. Hmm. You know, you're, you're going to have flavors that like you never would have thought or like how I used it is like if I have two ingredients, what's the common ingredient that's hmm. going to bring them both together? That's cool. Right. You're, you're it's 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 um, 
it's like uh, it's like math. It's you're you have to finding the missing finding the missing number. Yeah. You know, uh, huh. so I just loved it, and um, so I had fun doing that. that. Was that was my creative side? I got to do with with that. Met a lot of really cool friends there, uh, and then um, I, then it's uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then. I had a big mustache back then too, mm-hmm. and uh, I I had um, trimmed it one time fully off. I looked um, so strange to everybody because they hadn't seen me with this. I looked ten years younger, <laughs> whatever it was, and um, the general manager came out and he's like, "Oh, you sh- you clean up nicely. Why don't you work out front with us?" And I was like, "I never given it any thought because I'd always worked in the kitchens my whole life." So I said, "Okay, I would like to do that." Hmm. But sadly, it took a year <laughs> only because I, I don't know what was going on in the front of the house, but like maybe they were just fully staffed. They just mm-hmm. couldn't do it. But then another manager came on board, hmm. Frankie, who he came back. I fucking love Frankie. Um, oh, I know Frankie. Yeah. 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 And he, and he came back and, um, he was, and I was like, I approached him. I was like, you know, about a year ago, they had approached me to come out to the front of the house, and I'm like, I'd like to do that. Hmm. He goes, okay, we start you next week. I was like, okay. Wow. And so then I learned a dining assistant, which is like busing tables, just being just being present for when everybody, something needs you. Yeah. You're just always the body that's there to assist. Hmm. Um, and I did that, and then I uh, bar backed. And then I was given the position to be a bar, become a bartender mm. down in the Aqua Terrace, and I did that for three years, mm. and I absolutely loved that. I mean, one, if you bust your ass, you will make more money than anybody in that restaurant. Wow! Because you're a solo bartender, you're catering to up to 250 guests a day, if the spa's booked, okay, mm. and if they're coming outside, obviously, um, and but. It's really challenging because mm-hmm. every single day you are running up and down uh, because they don't have um, for food. I mean, because oh, you have yeah. to go all the way to the kitchen, all the way back, and you're carrying all these trays. You're not slipping. You're not falling. Not doing this, and then making everybody drinks around the place, mm. and um, it could be very lucrative. Mm. And you, you almost got to be able to pick your hours too a little bit. What was the training like when you were going from like up to the bar? Was there at that business? Was there like was there a dedicated training manual? Was there someone to show you what to do? They had training manuals, um, but I can't recall ever having something very formal. Okay. It was kind of like, you'll be training this week underneath somebody else. You're shadowing this person here. They're going to train you how to do it. Yeah. We probably had one or two front of house meetings, but I don't think it was for training purposes. Um, hmm. yeah, I'm sorry. I'm boring you. No, no, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm having, I usually only drink three, like three or four percenters and these are like 7.9. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, no. And, and that, and that, that's also part of the, you know, if you're a bartender at Mirabeau, every bartender is going to make you the same thing differently. Hmm. Okay. And that's technically not a bad thing but if you want consistency you're gonna want the same bartender every time you go yeah. okay because someone's gonna have a heavy pour or, or or someone didn't learn this exactly but the bartenders are very very skilled yeah very very skilled huh. um and the best ones are self-taught because really? they care enough i mean mirbo really had a great wine selection yeah um extensive enough that you knew the difference between anybody, even the DAs would know the difference between a Pinot, uh, a Grigio and a Chardonnay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's, there can be a spectrum in that too. Um, but hmm. the bartenders could tell you about the wines in the cases and they could explain to you. There was one time I came back to Mirabeau mm-hmm. uh, when I was working at the Krebs. Cause I worked, actually I worked at the Krebs right after that. And I came back to work on uh, three lives on like mm-hmm. my computer. I was probably just doing some R and D on equipment costs. And there was a bottle of B Lighten that had sat out half the day. And my buddy, it was either TJ or it was his brother, Andy. 
bartender that day came over. He goes, hey, man, this bottle's been sitting out all day. Uh, taste this. What's it taste like? Hmm. No joke. Um, it tasted like melted down chocolate. Hmm. And I had never had a red wine change my life like that. Hmm. It's very strange. Um, That's cool. And ever since then, I was like, I'm going to try more reds. Yeah. Um, and let them sit out and let them open up and show mm. them, show you their, <laughs> their <laughs> naughty parts, <laughs> you know, but like, I don't know. It was great. Um, that's awesome. And so when I was down in the aqua terrace, um, I, that's where I met Adam and his mm. gang. Yeah. They would come in every Saturday and, um, I was like, man, I'm like, how does one afford to come in here every Saturday and hang out. And I didn't know him at this time. I was never introduced. Yeah. And I was just doing my thing. And um, his friends have no problem saying, this is this is Adam. Yeah. Okay. But it's great. And uh, I was like, okay, hey. I, I, I didn't know um, we would become more acquainted over the time that had passed. So after three years, every Saturday seeing these people coming mm. through, we became more acquainted. Got to go to um, July Fourth parties at his place and things like that, and I and I felt really I felt very special. Yeah. And um, at the at the end, he asked me to be his bar manager, mm. and I was like, um, I mean, the money's in the right, the money's right. I'm like, yeah. I'll I'll do it. He he goes, I'll teach you some business pointers. Mm. I know you want to open up your own place. That's awesome. Uh, and, uh, but I, I need someone, uh, capable of doing this. And my first day there, mm -hmm. he's like, I, 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 he told me, I don't know why I hired you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh shit. Cause, cause I was at a table and they're like, so what wine do you suggest for this? Or what's, what's your house red? And like, it's my first day there. They basically made me the GM. Mm. And I was like, uh, let me go get the wine menu for you. And he didn't like that. I didn't know off the top of my head. Mm. first day and i was like yeah you're maybe i should be more prepared obviously huh. but um he, he was just like that was the most embarrassing thing i've ever had to deal with i don't know <laughs> why the fuck you're here and i was like i'm like i could put up with this for a year yeah. or so All right but i learned a lot hmm. you know and i learned a lot from lashak's yeah like do you know the michael lashak and pat you know pat i know the name yeah well pat works at gear Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking Leshack for oh. some reason. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, he, he's at uh, Sherwood now. Right, yeah. He's over. He's overseeing, I think, all the properties. Yeah. I've never met him before. Obviously, I know Pat. Um, Pat's never going to listen to this. Uh, but uh, I also have him Good. on the phone as Perrick. Oh, pa Perrick. Per oh, yeah. That's what I meant to say, Perrick. Perrick, yeah. <laughs> Perrick and Spiky Mikey. <laughs> I've never met his brother, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, but no, he worked at the Krebs for a while, mm -hmm. and Elephant and the Dove. Mm -hmm. So did Patrick. The stories that those two have of that of those places are fucking hilarious. It's it's amazing, dude. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and yeah, and I can disclose more things after the podcast right, yeah. <laughs> for all you Patreon <laughs> listeners out there. There'll be a fifty dollar donation yeah. gets you extra bonus content. <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, but uh, yeah, we we have a, a great a great time. Um, hmm talking about our, our, our history together at, the, at, at those places. And uh, I'm really happy with my friends that I've met along the way because they're doing big things too. Yeah. And um, it's just great to see people stick into what they love to do, mm -hmm. you know? And I implore anybody to do that. But you would ask me how I came up with the idea? Well, it's just, I mean, it, it makes sense to hear... Michael and Steven tell me that, like, you're, you know, you had brought out this, like folder or this binder or notebook of all your ideas for it because you know three lives is and matt and i were just kind of talking about this i choose i don't want to get to know people that i'm impressed with sure. uh, um i want to they will let you down exactly yes <laughs> thank you um uh, big time right and so <laughs> they will right. so um uh, if anything I'm about to say is untrue, don't correct me because I want to keep you on the pedestal that you're on. But okay. uh, Three Lives is just, you have it so perfectly branded 
on every fucking element. I mean, you walk in, you scan your ID. That's a game. You go in, yeah. the menu is a game. You can roll the dice. The food is fun and really good. Mm -hmm. And the drinks are fun and really good. Mm -hmm. And there's games everywhere. And the music and the lighting and everything is fun. And then you get your check and it's in a fucking video game. I mean, everything there Hell yeah. is supposed, it's like perfect. Yeah. I've never seen a restaurant do that before. Where yeah. every, like, there's always one thing in a restaurant. Where it's like, okay, that was out of place, or that was like that was the afterthought. Mm -hmm. But at Three Lives, it's just like, it's like a story. Everything you do is supposed to be where it is, when it is, and it's all great. It's this perfect experience. That's cool. Well, I think that it it's it's easy for me to to represent that because I've been gaming my whole life. Mm -hmm. And it just becomes a natural part of me to implement these things into that selection. And it's I think it's difficult uh, to do that maybe uh, in other themes. Like it's yeah. it's a theme, it's a gimmick, yes, but you make that its strength, right? Yeah. So like if you opened up um, a bar that's all about music, are you going to have live music? Right. Yeah. You know, you hope that you do, yeah. right? Um so I, I, I think that it was just kind of easier to theme it mm -hmm. and, and, and come up with these things. Yeah, you didn't have to have the check presenter like that, but it, it made sense to me yeah. to do it. It's like the perfect ending to your meal and experience. There. It's my favorite part of, of uh, service also oh, to really? give them that because it is mm. the yeah. cherry on top of it. I know? mean, besides the food and the drinks, which, you know, I have, we've had family friends for years that are Coca-Cola fanatics, um, and they swear that certain restaurants have better fountain Coke than others. Sure. Um, that's how I feel um, about the cans or any Sierra Nevada that I have at mm. Three Lives for some reason. Okay. It's just like, <laughs> that's the best Sierra Nevada that I've had. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so besides the food, my favorite part, I think, is the license check-in and the fact that you've gamified that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I knew that I wanted that to be part of an experience, but I didn't know how I was going to do a loyalty program. And I'm like, well, we have this unit that we bought from Adam at Funk, and um, we could use that Yeah, as long as it stays consistent. Hmm. Um, and it, and But... Uh, yeah, I just, that was, so 2019, hmm. 2018, I think is when I started. I just, I knew, so it, I prefaced all of that before because I had seen these people coming in every Saturday. I'm like, how do they afford that? Yeah. Oh, I asked them, what do you guys do? How do you hmm. guys afford to come here every single Saturday? Hmm. They're like, well, we all own our own business. And I was like, oh, doy, like, um, most of the people that, that go to me will sometimes do. Yeah. And I got to interview business owners every single day I was there. That's cool. You know, for a year. Hmm. And uh, Three Lives wasn't my first option. Hmm. I wanted to do silent studios hmm. because I, I'm a musician hmm. and I wanted a practice space that was going to be only we could hear what we were doing and hmm. didn't want to hear everybody else hmm. play their music and collide and cl clash. Yeah. But they're, that's not viable to do in Syracuse unless you really turn it into a studio where you can have musicians f coming from the area rehearsing there before the show or, or whatever, oh, yeah. you know, or make, or make it a, um, a format for, uh, a, like a tiny desk. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I soon found out that it was so niche. This is going to be a lot of work hmm. and any business is a, yeah. a lot of work, but if you're not super passionate about it and, don't know so much about it. it's like you could learn along the way yeah but like you really want to have a good grip on what you're doing to begin with yeah um and then i wanted to do a grocery store app mm. and then i found out instacart was a thing <laughs> and i also remembered that i don't know nothing about software <laughs> but i i had everything scoped out you know what i mean i really wanted yeah. to do it and uh Huh. even if i if even if it was me banging on my neighbor's door saying want me to pick up your groceries today yeah what do you, what's your list? Huh? You know, I was, I was going to figure it out some way, but yeah. I wanted to work for myself. I wanted to, I was getting, 
claustrophobic at, at, at this place. And actually, Mirabel was the place I've worked the longest. Hmm. You know, I was there for seven and a half, almost eight years. Wow. Uh, because I was able to bounce around. Yeah. But so anyways, I found out that they all own their own business. I'm like, I have to start thinking of stuff. And then I realized, hey, dumb dumb, Syracuse doesn't have a bar arcade. Yeah. You know the bar. You know the back of house. It's enough to build a business plan. Go mm. for it. Hmm. And that was that was back in 2018. That's amazing. Or when you're if you're thinking about something, are you thinking of is it kind of like a twofold? All right, here's the creative, like here's the creative side, here's the business side. Are you thinking just one or the other, and then the other side comes? Like if you're coming up with a new idea, like 2022, you've got some new stuff planned. Yep. What's your thought process behind it? Uh, 2022 menu uh, functionality comes from the failed attempts of what we do now it's like what are the complaints and if you don't use the complaints as obstacles mm-hmm. to fix you'll always have complaints yeah so it's just a it's i think it comes from a business sense to try something new and change it and adapt to what you think will work better but the creative part comes out um, hmm. and it just, man, it just enhances like that idea. We're like, well, what can we do? And then I think maybe those obstacles to come over those obstacles, you think creatively. And I think, so that pushes you in that direction. However, these are things that we've been wanting to do for a long time. And it's like, you, it's great to finally be able to get to those things Mm -hmm. you know there's still a lot of things i mean i'm still in the middle of uh, my alphabet of plan of my planning i'm not i'm never at plan a yeah my plan a is years from now Hmm. but i want but that's my goal when when fucking the virus hit yeah you know that uh that knocks you down a couple of pegs yeah i think the places that even were already open knocked them down a few pegs I can't imagine the stress that you had to endure through that. I mean, you know, I look at the 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 micro scale of what I do yeah. and the stress that I can feel at some at sometimes with it. I cannot fathom opening a restaurant when you did and then having things shut down the way that they did and the stre- like the toll that that would take on you. I mean, I, I, you know, 2 months ago I had a, a terrible ulcer from stress induced from this business. Wow. And we're on a tiny, tiny, tiny scale uh, with just myself as the employee. I sure. could not imagine having a staff, having this you know, lease, having this business that you've developed. And, 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 you know, during it, you did things that were more brave than anybody else of trying to find a way to stay open you were doing the live stream, which yes, I fucking yes, love. Yes, yes, very courageous. Um, I was not scared at all. You are a champion of the people, <laughs> John Page. Um, but, you know, I loved that. It was different. No one else had the wherewithal to say, what's something unique or interesting that we could do during this? Um, you were transparent. You were like, listen, we've got this much available. We can stay open for the next month unless yep. this happens. And yeah. And you weren't just saying like, you know, please, we can only stay open for this much longer. You were doing it and then doing something creative with it. selling my things. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, no, we, yeah, there was a lot of value in what we did, I think. And, you know, there was a point where people, you know, it was like, all right, who's going out of business? We know they're going out of business, we're going out of their business. And then here you are now with this amazing fucking three lives that... I don't know. In my opinion, you are, um, uh, I'm going to use a really big word here. Okay. I'm going to let you down. Uh, you are, I'm not, I'm never going to get to know you <laughs> much better than this. So, okay, cool. So we have to get everything out on the yeah. table tonight. <laughs> um, you're a catalyst for new concepts in Syracuse. You are a truly unique concept that has come to downtown Syracuse. Hell yeah. That, is paramount for the future of our f- restaurant industry. 
that is paramount for the type of people that are coming to Syracuse. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yes, we're not talking about a restaurant that's been open for 20 years, but a restaurant that just fucking survived the goddamn pandemic. Mm -hmm. And as from what I can tell, doing pretty well. And it's fucking amazing. No one else has come up with anything this creative or unique in the city in the six years that I've been doing this. Wow. And it's just, I couldn't be happier that you exist. That's really cool. I, I think going into it, um, that you may see it as very brave. Uh, but from my perspective, it's like, holy shit, this is another obstacle. Mm. It, it literally almost felt like uh, I did this to myself. Yeah. So take the responsibility <laughs> and just go with it. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, man, I mean, there was moments where it's like, I mean, Zach had to talk to me seriously. Hmm. Josh had to talk to me seriously. My sister had to talk to me seriously. Like the skeleton crew that we ran yeah. were like, there was moments where it's like, John, get your shit together. Yeah. It, it's, hmm. I am, they say if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. It can make you weaker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It doesn't always build you up. But I think from what we did and how we, we adapted every single day. Yeah. It was always different. Whatever the news was, it's always every day. The, um, I loved using Gearhars for our uh, layout, mm-hmm. p- placements, uh, ordering, uh, all the fulfillment. But that plan A, all the every you know your floor plan changes every day right and so it's like how do you how do we use the space that we have it, it becomes way more than a bar and a restaurant at that moment mm-hmm. you're trying to find every dollar value for each f- square foot hmm. how do i make the most out of this square foot right here six feet from the next square yeah, foot okay right. mm-hmm. and um but at the same time you're also learning a lot from the other businesses too mm-hmm. i could not have done this without the other business b- businesses around us yeah I'm so thankful for Funk, CSP, uh, Margaritas, Al's, mm. uh, OG. I mean, there's a lot of places that I still look up to, but the people that really helped us uh, and the most, too, it's like mm. the people aren't bad people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, had, n- had it not been for uh, Adam at Funk and Waffles, he stored our arcade machines when mm. we were not allowed to have arcade machines running. Oh, wow. He goes, Hey man, I actually have extra space. You can put your stuff in my place and rent awesome. free. It's like, that's great. Know? And, uh, that allowed us to open up our floor plan, get more tables and stuff in there and hmm. get people in the, the pandemic also had a lot of silver linings to it. Yeah. It's just hard for people to see. Yeah. But if you listened to how to change, you ended up, yeah. Uh, making those changes your strengths. Hmm. And um, I tell people all the time, they're like, they're like, how are you guys doing? I'm like, oh, we're good. They're like, really? <laughs> and I'm like, well, besides the, the, the crushing fear of what the pandemic brings next, yes. <laughs> because uh, had it not been for COVID, we wouldn't have the roll for a shot menu. Mm. Uh, because the day we opened, August 19th, 2020, the state liquor authority called us and a, a bar arcade from downstate blew us in. Yeah. And they're like, this bar up there is playing video games. How come we can't play video games? And I was like, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> and and uh, we said, okay, well, if we can't play our games, that's kind of our thing, day one, then how do we be more interactive at the tables? Hmm. Let's play games with people at the tables. How do we do that? Well, it's probably Josh came up with it. I'm guessing because he plays D and D. I honestly don't remember, but I had known that there's another place already, uh, and I think it's Ontario, Canada, or Ottawa, or whatever. Hmm. That it's called the Crow's Manor, and they have a D and D twenty side roll. Huh. Okay, I knew about that before yeah. doing this. I didn't know we were going to do it. Yeah, but I think Josh probably mentioned wanting to do it, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, let's do it. It's something that we can do." Yeah. And like a couple of weeks into it, and we also had the Zach and Cheese menu, which you could roll a D6 and get like build your mac and cheese how you oh, want it. Yeah. You do it yeah, on yeah. Wednesdays. Somebody came in, Dustin Dean. Magic was yeah. the thing for a while. It's now Dustin Dean Mentalist. And he was a TikToker that was growing his channel. He came into Gearhars. Did he? Oh, you want to see something cool? <laughs> Is it going to be your butt? Oh, it's not. 
Oh, he bent it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it still blows my mind. I know. I, st- I cannot figure out how he did that. I mean, I've, st- I've, I've actually spent time researching it. So for those of you not watching the podcast, th- I'm, I gave John a bent quarter that this mentalist came into Gerhars. Like, right before I left, he f- saw us on the Gerhars TikTok channel and came in to buy a bunch of forks. Because he was going to bend them. Graciously mm-hmm. stayed around to show, like, 12 employees 12 times in a row how, like, to bend quarters. It was insane. I have I have researched it, watched the YouTube videos on how people debunk it. There's no fucking way. he Like, all of the ways that they claim you can debunk how to bend a quarter... There's no fucking way. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I got how no I idea. Um, he he had um, he was our uh, our guest of honor for our one year anniversary. Oh, nice. Um, uh, because of all the the things that he did for us, honestly, he was he was just trying to benefit himself yeah. <laughs> at, at first because he he was making a TikTok video about this cool place that he had found um, and. He took a video of him and his friends going out to the new place in town, hmm. doing the roll for a shot, and then getting the and then it shows you here's us getting our drinks and then doing the roll for the mac and cheese and here's us eating our food huh. over tavern music. I won't steal your quarter. This won't go in my arcade machines anyways. It's broken. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, and the next day he messages us and goes, "Hey, so like my video that I made you guys last night is kind of getting blown up right now." Yeah. And I was like, that's awesome, man. I appreciate you. Come in, and I'll get you uh, get, get your first round on us. Yeah. And uh, and then he's like, hey, man, this thing won't stop getting views and traction. And so, again, because we listened to how to best serve people, how to stay interactive, that benefited us because it went so viral. Yeah. It was on Reddit. Um I funny, which I'd never heard about before that, but we've had people from all across the nation visit us because they'd heard about us. Mm. And just this year, I think it was the furthest someone's ever traveled from California. And this is, I mean, it's kind of a fluke, but they had heard about us in California. Mm. Um, and they were long distance in a long distance relationship with their boyfriend in Pennsylvania. Mm. And they were visiting their boyfriend in Pennsylvania a couple months ago. And they go, listen, we're close enough to three lives. We have to go. Wow. And they came up. That's and, I, and I was like, everything's double price. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I talked to, I mentioned that story of like the TikTok <clears throat> views and how, because I've heard that, I forget from who, but somebody told me that, you know, somebody that, the story I've heard is somebody did a TikTok about three lives and their dice and their roll for a shot. And it blew up, and Three Lives still gets business today from it. Yep, that's true. And I true. use that to ref. I use that when I'm talking to owners, and they're like, "Hey, should we get on TikTok?" I'm like, "Well, this happened, you know." Yeah, bingo. Yeah, and um, or just encourage TikTokers to come in. Yeah, you know, here's a good thing you can do. I just learned about this. It's like, um, you could use TikTok as marketing if you even if you don't have one. At least build the page so that. Uh, we're, what we're going to try and do is reach out to um, bartenders who are on TikTok and use them to pull traffic towards us. Mm. Okay, so as a business, if you make pizza, yeah, maybe you get somebody who makes great pizza. Say, hey, can you make our style pizza and to post about it? Mm. That way, you get some traction That'd with that. Cool. So there's there's always new ways that you don't even if, to use it. Yeah. If Josh will be up for it, so we've got, I have this sponsorship with um, Harborview Wines and Liquors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kaylee's great on the stuff, but we need some sort of like context to the cocktail videos. Like after. I chose this because. Right. After a couple minutes, after a couple months of doing it, I was watching. I was just like, all right, well, why are people like, there's no story behind the drink. She's just like, we're going to make this. Oh, yeah. Here's how to make it. Right. You, know? you want to know uh, why the Manhattan was invented. Right. Or. Uh, yeah. I was thinking we like one idea was we would go to a restaurant that's on the card and a different restaurant each month. We would come up with four cocktails. We would do the videos and then we would say you can make it at home or you can go to this restaurant and get it for this week only. Yeah. You know, and help like drive business. to yep. them. Um, So 
Yeah, but uh, I need to figure out ways to get the the content going a little bit more for that. Um, <clears throat> That's great. Yeah, and um, we talked about our partnering up in the future of the contest, the cocktail contest. We did. We, I mean, we briefly talked about it a I little bit. I was like, that. hey, I messaged you. I'm like, hey, I really want to do this thing. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Yo, yes. you remember now. Yeah, I do, yes, I do remember that. Now. I think it's such like, a really cool idea, too. And yeah. I think it could help showcase. Like, we, Syracuse doesn't have one yet. Yeah. I'd love to have bartenders. And that maybe this is a foreshadow. Yeah. I hope. That'd be fun. Because I would love to have any, maybe it's competing bar, bars or whatever. It doesn't yeah. really matter. It's just whoever wants to do this can probably do it. Where it's like, we need uh, judges for it, which you would be a judge, and just basically like, okay, bartenders, two at a time, make an elixir, make a potion, and makes make a tincture mm. or make a poison. Yeah, Poisons are going to be in our future menu where it's like mm. medicinal, herbal, oh, nice. uh, bitter cocktails yeah. will be poisons. Elixirs will be the balanced ones. Hmm. Things like that. So that'd be cool. Make make these formats. Yeah. And then showcase your work. You get to choose all the glassware that we have hmm. to showcase it in. Wow. Whatever best represents that. Yeah. Tr- tell us why you made it. Tell us what the ingredients are. What led you to this, and really make it more than just a cocktail contest. Have you thought at all about what would happen if you're allowed to serve THC in any of your drinks in the restaurant? Um. I haven't. I'm still confused on the. I mean, I don't know if if restaurants are going to be allowed to, but yeah, I, I'm still confused on if I'm allowed to or not because I don't think I can serve both on one location. Gotcha. I know that I'm allowed to grow on a different premises. Hmm. My friend, who if he listens to this, he's gonna be very happy that I use the word premises, not premise. Because that was a mistake I've been making for years and finally learned to say premises. Um, I think that's going to be pretty... In- I know there's a couple spots coming to Armory that are doing different things with weed. Yeah. Um, and that'll be kind of cool. I'm really happy. Yeah. Um, no, my plan is to just grow it. Yeah. I want to be... I want to be making the shovels. You know what I mean? I want to yeah. be, be supporting it, but from the stance of you can buy it from us yeah. to sell at your place. Because... Mm. It, I find that's going to be more lucrative than yeah. overhead and things like that. Yeah, for sure. I'm excited for dispensaries to open up and get some edibles that I've never had before oh, in my wow. life. Yeah. I mean, there are places now you can go, I know. Um, I don't remember exactly where they are, but I mean, I we could talk to some friends or whatever, but there are places. I know there you was mean one. Some that, drug dealers? Yeah. No, <laughs> it's uh, there's one place that's doing it right now. I think the I heard it on Syracuse.com where this guy was selling weed, but it was like donation format. Hmm. So, oh, no, no, it wasn't even donation. It's like you buy a sticker and this sticker is called purple, purple Kush. Yeah. Three, three and a half. Well, you buy the sticker and now your gift is right. purple Kush. That's three and a half. You know, it's funny you say that. Grams. A friend of mine in Cincinnati who has a similar sort of thing, they don't do a, a disc. Well, they used to do a discount card, but they don't anymore. But it's called Chow Down Cincinnati. And they have a Facebook group that's got like over 100,000 members. Wow. And um, they sell stickers that every time you buy a sticker, you get your name put into a hat for like a PS5 or, you know, whatever. What the heck? Yeah. And the stickers could be like seven bucks a piece. They design a different sticker for each one, and um, you have better chances winning that raffle than trying to find a PS Five on your own. <laughs> yes, uh, my brother just bought one, and then they decided to return it because they're kids. He was like, his wife bought it, and but the kids already have like Xboxes, uh-huh. and so he was like, he's like, it doesn't work that way. They can't just migrate all their stuff over. So. Oh, I understand. Um, so they wound up just returning the PS5. Yeah, that's not how video games work. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, but uh, I've been thinking about NFTs a little One bit. One world console. Okay. Yeah. I've been thinking about NFTs a little bit with Eat Local and just like... Sure. I've been thinking about them with like investing, but I've been thinking about could we develop, like design some NFTs and sell them, but they're like experience-based. 
you know, whoever. The Did the Panofskis turn you on to this? No. no? Uh, okay. Because, <laughs> like, that's yeah. what they were talking to me about last time I talked to them. Gary V turned me on to it. You know, it's like these dumb things. It's, you know, he was talking when he did his his NFT launch. You could only buy it with Ethereum. Well, at the time, Ethereum was eight hundred dollars a coin, and by the time that they launched, that you could bid and buy his NFTs, Ethereum was up to like three thousand dollars a coin. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm listening mm-hmm. to him talk about this in podcast after podcast, and thinking to myself, "Oh, should I try and buy it? One of his NFTs is going to be worth it." Not thinking to myself, "Oh, wait." He's saying this to millions of people who are all running out to buy Ethereum. Ethereum is going to fucking skyrocket. Yeah. So, people um, want more digital assets in this lifetime. I mean, it's a big deal in the world. I don't know how many people in Syracuse are into it. I don't know. You know, Syracuse, I always say, is five years behind Buffalo, and Buffalo is 10 years behind New York City. There you go. We all know literally because I said the same thing. It's like we're 16 years behind this place. Yeah. So other reasons, but so I don't know when NFTs are gonna hit big or whatever in Syracuse, but uh, and that's really where our following is. Um, We just don't have a big following in places like New York City. Well, maybe you can thank social media for that. Yeah, I can. (laughs) Um, But eat those (laughs) words you said earlier at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, Yes, that's true. Um, (laughs) That is true. Uh, But. I've thought about like maybe we develop a cup like an NFT and sell it for whatever, and whoever holds that, whoever has ownership at the time, they get to attend some rager or you know whatever. Yeah, uh, I'd say guys to go for it. Yeah, yeah. You, it's it's always worth um, the chance to right. take. You know, and there's not much risk behind your side of doing it, making it. No, there's not. Um, yeah, you know, I'd be hiring an artist. I'd probably hire Tommy to do it or something. Lincoln? Yeah. yeah hell, hell yeah. Because he'd do something cool. He, Yeah, he would. Yeah. Yeah, or Tina Lopez also. I don't know who that is. Tina Lopez made our Medusa head mm. at Three Lives, and now and and now he's over on Kasai hmm. uh, doing stuff there, too. It's That's like cool. I see him popping up everywhere now. Yeah. I just think he has a unique style, too. I mean, honestly, stay fresh. Yeah. Lincoln, Tommy, has his own style, too, obviously. Right. Uh, but when I was there looking at uh, the exhibits he had, I was like, this is cool. Oh, it's a lot of unique artists in town that would. Yeah. You can I make, think I want to get something with. painted on that wall over there behind the paper. Behind the wall? Yeah. You said? Behind the wall yeah. on the paper. Cool. Yeah. That's exactly what oh. I said. <laughs> um, you know, something really. On the inside. Some really, really meta. It's really what counts on the inside of that wall over there. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that is very meta of you. You're going inside. <laughs> Could you just project your thoughts into the wall and tell me what you're thinking of drawing? That's amazing. Make that an NFT. That's exactly how it works. <laughs> and that's how NFTs are created. Yeah. They're in the metaverse. Yeah. Man. Uh, hey, you know what's going to be big, though? I mean, yeah. NFTs will definitely be a part of the uh, the metaverse. Yeah. Like that whole... Hey, I'm on Facebook, but right. an NFT, like how Gary Vee described it, which finally resonated with me, because people, listen, the Panofskis can talk my fucking ear off <laughs> for 30 hours about it. I'm never going to be able to understand what Gary Vee told me in one sentence. Yes. Okay? And yeah. that sentence was, and I'm paraphrasing, um, think think of an NFT as a skin on Fortnite. Right. Or a, a weapon uh, skin armor on Halo. Right. That's an NFT. And yeah. basically it's a pissing contest. Yeah. Where it's like, I have this, you don't. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. But I think the metaverse is going to have that. It's like, uh, I, I bought a pet on right. Facebook and my pet follows me around. It's like, that's so cute. How do I get one? You can't. Yeah. Sorry. Buy yeah. it. It's worth a million dollars. And uh, Jeff Bezos wants to buy it for a trillion, so you have to cough up. You have to make another trillion in five seconds, or I'm buying it, giving it to him. <laughs> There's, um... but overall, yeah. honestly, if I want to talk about NFTs, I hope I don't. I mean, I'm going to eat my words. <laughs> hope I don't buy one. Really? Cause, oh, because because it, here's the thing, man. I talked about my crypto wallet. Yeah, lost that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's digital. It's not. I don't look at it for the it's not art a watch. It's of not. It. I mean, I'm sure I could dive into that world pretty deeply if I wanted to. Sure. But 
I don't look at it for like, wow, the art of an NFT. I look at it for, is this something that I could make a shit ton of money from? Yeah. And, which, which, yeah. You know, to really make a shit ton of shit ton of money from it, you have to dive into it because sure do. you have to know what's going to hit and what's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have to be, you have to make that your path. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm, yeah. and listen, more power to you if that's what you want to do. Yeah, that's because not what I want to do. Because I, it's, I've always told people it's like they want to get this get rich quick scheme. Yeah, and they believe that this pyramid thing's going to work out, and it's just like they don't they don't know how to start. A, they don't know what business to start, and they want to just jump onto crypto. Oh, I'm going to be a crypto trader. Right. What's the first thing you know about crypto? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Do something you're passionate about because that's going to keep the the ups and the downs, you can surf those waves, but it's easier if it's just placid. Yeah. You know, it's going to make everything much, much more even keel for you as a fucking human. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, John yeah. Page, you said it all. I've said all of it. You said all of it. Yeah. I say go for it.